Hello everyone, can you hear me? I guess it does work, right? Okay. Well, uh, welcome to our session. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Teresa Light. I'm a web developer. Uh, I enjoy creating uh, exciting, interactive websites and games. I'm particularly passionate about games, and that's what one of the things that I liked about Create JS. Yeah, me too. We both. This is Sorry, Josh, yeah. I, I'm also a web developer. We um, we both we both love create, creating things that make uh that make the user say wow. You know, we both lo love uh, when we get together. We love really intricate designs and making them come to life, breathing life into them with code. And so, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> so, I love Create JS. I the first time I saw Create JS, Grant Skinner was showing it at a conference, and he was showing a game, and it wasn't using Flash, and I was so excited because I didn't want to use Flash. And so then, then I started like watching it and trying it, and I really, really like it. So Josh and I both love this toolkit, and that's why we're here today. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and show you what it's all about. So CreateJS um, is actually five separate libraries. Um, and th what I love about it is, so each of these libraries, you could, they all work great together to make really cool, exciting things, and they, or you can use them separately. Um, you want me to turn? We, I, I was going to go through each, oh, the five libraries are EaselJS, TweenJS, SoundJS, PreloadJS, and uh, Zoe. So I was going to go through each library and kind of show which each one is and maybe a use case for it. And then at the end, we'll kind of, kind of show like how we put them all together and made something cool. Okay. So um, something exciting to say about CreateJS is it's growing like crazy. Um, all, the, all the web banners that you see on, the, um, on sites, most of those used to be built with Flash, and now most of them are being built with uh, CreateJS. Um, just in the, la in the, I'll read this to you, two months ago, the number of hits in a 30 day period increased 72% to 57 million. One month ago, that number jumped by 60% to 91 million. This month, it shot up at an astounding 78%. So CreateJS, it's exploding. It's, it's, um, it's, it's really gaining in popularity. And with, with the popularity of the users, the community is also growing. Uh, the, the Twitter, they have a very active community on Twitter. If you tweet CreateJS or you, uh, tweet Grant or Sebastian, the, the leaders of the project, they tweet you back almost instantly. Um, they just started a Google Plus, and it's growing. And you know, on the um, on GitHub, between the five libraries, there's 6,271 stars. So not only is the framework growing in its use, the community that's uh, you know developing with it or that's interacting with each other is also growing. Uh, here's some of the companies that are using it, and uh, it's just a small group. But like Josh said, a lot of them are using it for like banner ads to replace Flash. And one of my favorites that I like was the one with the Hobbit. They're using it for part of their immersive world and, uh, and the games. It's just good for games. Well, here's just some of the com companies that uh, the CreateJS people gave us that said they were big users. Okay. So the first library that, um, that I was going to show was the PreloadJS. What PreloadJS lets you do is it lets you manage all your assets. What's, um, what's cool is it allows you to control when you load what. And so this library, I've, I've used this several times without using the rest of the CreateJS libraries. So as I said before, all the libraries can be used independent of each other. And um, it's really great because we, uh, for instance, at work, we had to build an IE8, uh, IE8 app. And I think the page load time, it, it had to hit load within like three seconds. So we loaded the main content you know, controlling the load time with, the, with preload, and then loaded everything else around it afterwards. So, and um, the way it works is you build an array or a manifest of the files you want to load in the order that you want to load them, and then you just, you just run them through. Okay, the next one. So this is, what, this is what the code looks like. So you just build your manifest, and it, it has, there's three events, there's a progress, a fail, and a complete, and you just load. But the whole, the whole, the whole suite is very easy to use APIs. So the next, uh, the next library that they, they have in the CreateJS Create family is EaselJS. Easel, EaselJS works with the, um, the HTML5 canvas, and it provides a, like a, a Flash-like API. I don't know if any of you guys use Flash, but it provides a Flash-like API. 
that's very uh, easy, easy to use. There's, um, there's like five main components that I use. There's the stage, the uh, bitmaps, text, and sprite sheets, which is the obvious on the, that's on the stage, and there's a ticker that animates. Beyond that, you could use filters, masks, and transformations to change the objects on the stage. So I put a code example of that to show its API. So you can see here, it's, it's super easy. You just um, declare your canvas and make that your stage. Then there's a ticker that controls the animation, and then you can just make your graphic and add it to the stage. So all these, that turns into that, which is, I don't know, it gets bigger, it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> so next there's tween.js. So tween.js is for moving things across the screen or you know, fading things in, or, in and out. So um, here, can you hit it? yeah. So here, here is where I took the same circle that I made in the, first, um, in the first previous slide. Uh, we're making the same circle, and we're just tweening it to move. Super easy, and it's cool because it supports chaining. So you can build the tweens on top of each other. So you see it moves, the circle moves. See, it gets bigger. <laughs> it gets... <laughs> okay, so the, 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 final, the last library that I use is uh, Sound.js. Sound, so with, um, with sound, I've, I don't know, I've had problems trying to get the sound to work on all, uh, on all the different browsers between Chrome, Firefox, trying to get to work on an iOS device. And so Sound.js has made it easy, I think, uh, to, to work on all the different devices with one API. So I took, um, so i show you, basically, again, a super easy API, you just register the sound, and then you just you know, play it when you wanna play it. So I took that same circle, Right? And I added the sound to it. So if you click on it. We got a very, very small click area up here. Oh, Josh. It just plays a ding. Yeah, there you go. There you go. See? So I don't know. Maybe it's not much to show, but it, I, you, could build, you could build on top of that. You know, it, it, just, it doesn't take much to build the canvas elements with these libraries. Okay, uh, you heard me mention Flash earlier. I've been uh, not wanting to learn Flash. I, it's been like so much to learn with all the other things you have to learn to be a web developer these days, a good web developer and game developer. So at first I thought Flash was going away, but now I wonder because they have this optional toolkit for Flash that you just go and you drop down, this is in CS6, and it exports the content for CreateJS. I didn't get time to personally try this, but I'm excited about actually trying to do something in Flash and then exporting it. And I put a link to an example on the web that shows how they're doing it and shows the example they created it. So if you wanted to see how to take something you have out of Flash and put it into CreateJS, this is a, a place to go. So, uh, so we, we came up with this uh, case study on yeah. how you could use the libraries. So like I said, I, I said it repeatedly, but you could use all the libraries independently, and, and there's use cases for all of them, and they work great independently, but together they, 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 together they become really awesome. So we made this uh, case study of how you can actually use it. And so, you know, a typical, please build me a way to select a state, you know, for like shipping or whatever. So typically, you could just make a list of states, right, that you could click on, or a drop down of states, right? But what if you wanted something more uh, interactive or something more immersive, right? Well, we, we go ahead. Okay. We so, came up with this. Yeah, we came up with this. This is a map. And uh, it really put everything all together. We used all the components. This is available to, in GitHub, which we'll show you in a bit. But basically, you hover over and you can see some easing in and out, and that if you click on them, the name changes in the, in the box, and you get a little ding. So it just pulls it all together. Now, I, wa I wanna talk a little bit about how we went about building this, so you know. Uh, first thing I did was I got a map, a graphic, I purchased a graphic, I extracted all the states out of, out of it, and I made a little mis bit of a mistake because I did it in Illustrator, and so I had a hell of a time getting it from Illustrator into Photoshop to export it as ping, but I managed to do it. <laughs> You're laughing. I mean, but it was, it was 
painful. So I get this in the Photoshop. I have to rename all the layers. I found an export of the Photoshop, and I finally got my beautiful pings, and I got them the right color. And then we load them all. We put them all in a directory. We load them each into an array. And basically, we put the create.js commands. We loop through the array, right? And, yeah, so basically, and all, then, all this map was was just creating an array of 50 assets, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then calling preload.js to, to go through the array and load them into memory. And then as they, as they loaded, we placed them on the screen using easel.js. So turn, we turned them into display objects. And then we added click, event, click events click to event. them and used tween.js to tween in and out the, um, the overlays. And then we used sound.js to make the little ding and spent more time searching for the sound than we did implementing the sound.js two yeah, lines so of code. <laughs> I guess the point of the story, the point of the, the story is it, it, it didn't, really didn't take that much for us to build a more immersive solution using these libraries. Uh -huh. And the, the learning curve of the whole thing was really, um, it's really small. I mean, I've done a couple projects, but the, um, the, the API is super easy to use. I mean, I found it very easy to use. This is, uh, I, I enjoyed more, this project. It, it took, took us more time to get the assets ready than yeah, it did the code. It took more time on the assets than it did the code. And then the tweaking, like this box needs to go up a little bit and this needs to go over a little bit, but it was fun. And I like a project that pulls it all together. So this will show, if you go into GitHub and get the code, it shows you an example how each is used. And it could be used in, in other areas, too. I could see a lot of applications for this. OK. OK, does, um, has anybody tried CreateJS before? Just one person. Does anybody think they might want to try it? Wow, that's good. Uh, I encourage you to try it. And if you need some help, here's our Twitter if you want to Follow us. We'll be putting up more stuff on. Or if you tweet the, um, yeah. you know, the, like I said earlier, the community is growing so yeah. much that if you if you tweet any of the um, these people, the Grant Skinner, he actually I don't know if any of you guys are Flash people, but he actually built like GreenSock for Flash, and then he worked on GreenSock for uh, for JavaScript, and now he's been the lead on this project, right? And then um, this, is, I guess, is, is like his left hand man. But if you go on Twitter, he's the one that replies all the time. And he actually will help you like, look into your code. It's actually, the, I don't know, I think that out of, all, out of the frameworks that I work with, this community is probably one of the most responsive. Right. They, they were really great to work with. We wanted good logos so we didn't have to just grab them off the website and they sent, them art, or they sent us artwork. And they were really nice to work with. And, yeah. and Grant, you know. When I first saw their presentation, if you ever get to see the, the Grant present us and how he makes the games and everything, it's really great. Yeah. So I hope you will uh, try to use it. I encourage everybody to use it. And thank you for coming to our session today. That's it. <laughs>